Today, I'll be showing you the easiest way you can automate social posting using Bloteo. You see, one of the best ways to get followers on socials is to post consistently every day on different platforms. And for example, for this account, who is posting powerful website you should know on Instagram is getting 20 millions of views on his most viewed video. And he's also getting millions of views on his TikTok account, as well as nearly 100k followers on threads by simply cross-posting the same video across different platforms. Now, if you were to do it every day manually, it will quickly become a tedious process, and that's why we should automate it. So to do that, I've built a workflow so that you can quickly upload a media file, such as image or video, together with a text description, and when you execute it, it will upload the file to Bloteo and upload it to nine different social media channels under one single action. So when the execution is done, you can see the media has been uploaded to different platforms. So this is my TikTok, this is my Instagram, this is on X, this is on Threads, this is on LinkedIn, this is on Facebook, this is on Blue Sky, this is on Pinterest, and it has also uploaded a test video that I've uploaded before on YouTube. So just real quick, if you don't know me, my name is Grayson, and our mission in AI Builders Lab is to empower you to let AI work for you. In fact, to make this super easy for you, I've compiled this tutorial into a guide, and especially you can find a free template in the bottom of this section. The tool that we'll be using today is called Bloteo, and if you haven't heard of Bloteo, it's basically like a social media accounts aggregator, and currently it supports connecting to nine popular social media channels, like what I just did here. And more importantly, it exposes an API interface so that we can publish posts in an automatic manner. And to move one step forward to simplify everything for you, I've also found one of the community nodes out there which abstracts away all the API and complex JSON logic so that we can focus on building the machine rather than dealing with all those JSON syntax. But there's one caveat though, is that using these Bloteo community node require us to use a self-hosted instance of any end because on the cloud version, it only supports a limited list of community nodes. And in case you don't already have a self-hosted instance, we'll just go through each step one by one in a very easy manner. So when you're ready, let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is to install Docker Desktop. So just head to docker.com and then we'll just download the Docker Desktop with your specific operating system. And once it's downloaded, it's completed, we'll just install that on our computer. So once you have set up the Docker desktop and log into your account, what we can do is to go to the images tab and then in the search bar, we'll type in NEN. And what we need to do is just to run this image and wait for a couple of seconds. When it finishes loading, what we can do is to click on the run button here and open optional settings. For container name, we'll use NEN. And more importantly, we need to expose the 5678 port here and then just click run again. And later on, it'll just spin up a container which will then be used to access the self-hosted instance of NEN. Once the script is completed, go back to the containers tab and then click on this localhost URL. And then now you can set up your account and access any end. And once you have set up the account, what we'll do next is that we'll head to settings and then community nodes and install a community node. So we'll type in this any end nodes potato and check the disclaimer and install it. And after we've installed it, we'll head back to the home page and create a new workflow. And now just rename this however you want. And once it's ready, you can head back to our community page and just download this template so that you can import it from the three dots here. So import from file and just import everything here. Now you'll notice a lot of errors here because we have missed several important configurations such as the Bloteo access key as well as different social account IDs. But what I'm going to do next is to walk through each node one by one so that you can properly set up your Bloteo upload machine. Okay, so the first step is to head back to Bloteo and sign up for an account. Now, just a note on the pricing. Now, although Bloteo offers a free trial, but then in order to use the API, it has to be on the starter plan. So just a note that if you want to continue this tutorial, you do have to pay for $29 to activate your Bloteo subscription. After you have signed up the account, now we can head to the settings page and scroll down such that you can link your social media accounts with Bloteo. So I'm just going to use an example for Twitter. So once I uh, click on this button, and then it will just authorize different stuff. And then eventually, once you have done for every account, you will see a list of accounts with their IDs here. So this is my Blue Sky, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and etc. And then the next step is to get an API key from Potato. So just follow the instructions from the site, and eventually you will be able to copy your API key once you have set that up. So once you have copied your API key, we can now head back to the workflow and click on this media upload node. The very first step will continue is to create a credential for Bloteo. So what we can do is to create new credentials and just paste in the API key you have just copied. 
Under the APF key, you can also see a bunch of ID fields here, and these are just identifiers generated by Potato so they can be used to route and post to different platforms. And you can actually copy this ID from the Potato settings page. So for example, if I've connected to all my social accounts, you can copy each of the account ID one by one, and then just paste it into the columns one by one. And once you have filled in all the IDs, you should be seeing similar screen as I do. So just leave the Facebook page ID empty for now, and we'll fill that in, in the node level later on. And same for the Pinterest board ID. So once you have done everything, just click save, and it will just set connection tested successfully if the API key is correct. And once you have set up the credentials, the media upload node will no longer be read, and we should also do the same for the rest of the node. So just making sure that you have the potato account to be the credentials account for the rest of the nodes. And after you have done it, we can now see the error symbols are all gone. But before we continue to test out the rest of the nodes, let's just kind of test the workflow before we upload the different medias. So we'll deactivate the rest of the nodes and click on Execute Workflow. So what happens now is that it will prop up a new form which allows us to upload a media such as image or video to get over a caption. So I'm just going to do a quick demo. So test and then submit it. So what happens is that these three nodes will execute and we'll check the result one by one. So the first node we have is an NAN form trigger. So what it does is that include a few things, so a title and a description, which is telling the user what the form is supposed to do. What's more importantly is the form element. So we have a file element which allows the user to upload JPEG images, PNG images, or also MP4 and MOV video file formats. And more importantly, it also has a caption so that it can attach a video description or an image caption depending on the media type. And once you have done the form submission, you can see that I can visualize the media that I've uploaded here together with different schemers, such as the uploaded date as well as the MIM type. And after that, if you go to media upload, it's essentially just uploading this file to Protato in exchange for a media URL like these, database.protato.io with the IDs for that image, which will then use this media URL to upload to different social media platforms. And just before the social platform node steps, we will just get back all the social accounts ID that we have set up in the credentials, like Instagram ID, YouTube, etc., so that we can drag and drop these items to each of the nodes here. And now we can reactivate the nodes like these, activate the nine nodes, and then I'll just walk through each of the social nodes one by one as well. So the first node is a Twitter node. So if I click on that one, you can see there are a bunch of fields here. The most important one is a platform field. So this is a drop down menu where you can select the platform where this node will upload the post to. So because this node is specific to Twitter, I'll just leave it to be X. And then here is just like drag and drop different things we have from the form submission. So this post tag is essentially dragging these tabs, tabs field here so that we we'll get back the caption. And the media URLs is something I have from the media upload step. So this is the Blotato database URL I have for the file. And remember the account ID is the JSON item that we have from the social accounts object. So for example, like these Twitter ID is coming from this view, so 2899. So you can also have the ability to schedule posts or also create a thread for this Twitter stuff. And then next up, we have Instagram, very similar to what Twitter does, except the ID will be Instagram ID and also the toggle will be Instagram. So I'm just gonna leave everything untouched and walk you through the rest of them. So threads is similar. But then there is like a bunch of more granular controls specific to the platform, like this reply control, as well as, you know, create thread and schedule posts again. And then there is TikTok as well. And for TikTok, you can also add different options here, such as like auto add music for your images, is your brand, is AI generated tech, and also a bunch of other fields. And then for YouTube, I also have everything preset here. You can also configure the privacy status, whether your upload will be public, private, or unlisted and also the ability to notify subscribers and schedule post. And then same thing for Blue Sky, where you have these preset values and also the ability to schedule posts and create thread. The only three nodes that we need to configure further, it's Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest, where it requires a specific page ID for the business account. So let's talk about Facebook first. Now, if you click inside, you'll see that there's a Facebook page ID required here. So note that this is different from the Blotato Facebook ID you have just generated, but this is like a page ID specific to your business and it's generated by Facebook within itself. So how you can obtain it is that once you add your Facebook business page, you can go to the about section and then go to the page transparency page and then the page ID will be shown here. So you just have to copy it and then just paste it inside here and save the workflow. 
So the next node I'm going to talk about is the LinkedIn. So if you click on LinkedIn, there is also a LinkedIn page ID required here. And you can do so by, again, going to your LinkedIn business page. And then you can go to the URL and copy and paste this section, which is between company and admin. And copy and paste this and paste it in the page ID and save it. Now, the last node I'll be talking about is the Pinterest, which is the most complicated node. So if you click inside here, then you can see a bunch of other fields here, like pin title, alternate text, and URL, and Pinterest board ID. So title, text, and URL are all, all optional, but then this board ID is required. So if I go back to Pinterest, essentially you can only upload an image to the board itself. So if I click on that, then you can see some of the previous upload into this board. But more importantly, how do we actually get the board ID? And unfortunately, this does require a little bit more technical setup. I'm really sorry about it. But what you can do is actually go to more tools and click on developer tools. And then we'll click on the network field and just refresh this page. So when it is refreshed, and then you can search for board in the search bar and just click on any of the name that has the get here. And then essentially, if you just go to one of them, it could be any one of them, then you can see that the board ID, it's being shown here. So you can just copy this board ID and now go back to the tutorial and just paste this thing in and save the entire workflow. And now you should be able to configure all the social nodes and the only thing left is to run the workflow and let the upload work for you. So what I'm going to do is to click on execute workflow and then just choose the same test image and choose a random caption and click submit. And then you can see that all the nodes were perfectly fine executed, except I've deactivated the YouTube node because I'm just uploading an image. But in case you want to test it with a video, all you need to do is to reactivate this node like so and also deactivate Pinterest and also Blue Sky because these two platforms only support images upload now, but all the other platforms should also support video upload. And now you can then execute the flow again, again, using videos. And that's it. If you go back to my TikTok account, you can see that the second test image has also been uploaded. So this is the end of the tutorial. If you do find this video useful, please like and subscribe. It will really help the growth of this channel so that we can continue to upload more videos like these. And if you do want to join a growing community of AI enthusiasts who are turning AI into real income, do consider joining AI Builders Lab, which is linked in the video description below. So that's about it. See you next time. Thank you.